ocean, over the clouds, and around the world. Here comes the wild side of wildlife. The Animal Show! And now, let's have a wild welcome for your furry friends. Stinky and Jake! Now it's the Animal Show! you little animals out there. <laughs> I'm stinky. <laughs> and I'm Jake, and today's guests are a crab and a snail, two animals with shells. Well, gee, it'd be neat to have a shell. Well, I'm sure it would be a lot of fun to have a shell, but but, but right now we're you going know, to you go... You talk me into it, Jake. We're getting a shell. I'm going to go order it. <sighs> Why does this always happen to me? And now it's time for... That's amazing. Today, let's look at a giant snail. Most of us think of snails as teeny weeny little animals that live in gardens. Yeah, and eat my geranium. Uh-huh. But great African land snails like this are the largest of all living snails. Ooh. Their shell grows up to six inches long, and when moving, they are a gigantic eight to nine inches long. Now that's an escargot lath. The great land snail. Another animal that scares my geraniums and will make you say... <gasps> That's it's amazing! amazing. Uh, oh, oh, hello, Shelly's Shell Shop? Uh, I'd like to order a shell. Yeah, extra, extra large. That's right, the polar bear and skunk size. Well, thank you. Mm, there you go. You ordered us a shell? Yes, I did. Don't thank me, Jake. Just introduce the first guest. Okay. <laughs> and now, from the oceans and fresh waters of the world, world. here's Cornelius the Crab. Wow, they came all the way from the ocean for this. Would you look at this dump? What can I tell you? You don't get good service anymore. Places aren't made the way they used to be. <laughs> well, Cornelius, it's a pleasure to have you here. No, the pleasure is all yours. Uh, gee, you sure are crabby. Yeah, of course I am. I'm a crab. And to prove it to you, I brought pictures. Let me show oh. you. Oh, a clip. Ah, the ocean. How I wish I was there. Now, do all crabs live in the ocean? No. Some live in fresh water, some in salt water, and some spend a lot of time on the land, like this crab. Peekaboo, I see you. And he sees you, too. So he'll be getting out of there quick. Well, as quick as a crab can go. Yeah, crabs certainly don't travel very fast. Not usually, but we can move fast enough if there's danger. And we almost always move sideways. When you've got legs on your sides, it's a lot easier to go sideways. Trust me on this. Well, are all crabs as crabby as you? Crabs aren't crabby. Well, I, I never complain. Although, I'll tell you what does get under my claw. When I don't get enough to eat. Well, what do crabs eat? Fish. Now, you see this crab here? He's digging around in the seabed. And what does it find? A nice piece of dead fish. Dead fish? Oh, that's too bad. Oh, no, that's good. That fish is good eating. I'll take your word for it. That crab is holding onto the fish with his claws. Right, Jake. The front legs of a crab are either claws or pincers, and they are perfect for grabbing and digging. On our sides, we have walking legs or paddles. Is there more than one kind of crab? Sure. There are about 4,500 different species of crab. This one here is called a decorator crab because it decorates itself with weed. No, oh, there's also the Dungeness crab, the fiddler, the ghost crab, the giant crab, the hermit crab, the land crab. The crabby crab. Very funny. The mole crab, the horseshoe crab, the pea crab. The robber crab. Oh, I just oh, love naming crab yes. species, don't you? I could spend days. Mm. That's what I'm afraid of. Tell me, Cornelius, what kind of crab is this one? That's a shore crab. And she's using a claw to get food out of that whelk shell. <laughs> Beats eating dead fish. Maybe, but it's a lot of work getting the food out of the shell like that. But sometimes you just got to reach in and grab your meal. I'll remember that next time we're having whelk for dinner. Yeah. Well, tell us, Cornelius, of all the different kinds of crabs, what's the most unusual you've ever seen? Well, take a look. Tell me your thoughts. Wow, look at the size of that claw. I told you these guys were out looking. These are fiddler crabs, and they're called that because that big claw makes it look like they're playing the fiddle. But why do they have one big claw and one small claw? Maybe that makes it easier to play the fiddle. Maybe. You can never tell. But claw size is also important because each claw serves a different purpose. What do you mean? Well, the fiddler crab's small claw is perfect for scooping up the tiny bits of food that these crabs eat. They use their big claw to defend themselves and attract mates and they use their side claws for digging a hole in the sand that they can crawl into. Why do they dig holes in the sand? Are they shy? No, Stinky, no. They dig the hole so they have a place to rest when the tide comes in. Oh. Then, when the tide goes out, they dig themselves out and look for more food. 
Must be feeding time. Now, what are these crabs doing? Hmm, that's the other thing fiddler crabs do with their big claws. They fight each other. I bet that big claw packs a wallop. But why are they fighting? Ah, the usual reasons. They fight over a mate, or over some particularly nice piece of beachfront property, preferably in Miami. But, well, that's not for me. When a fight like this starts, I just look for a nearby hole, and I get out of there. Well, do you think Jake and I should hide in a hole until our shell arrives? Stinky, let me be honest with you. I could care less. <laughs> Hey, come on, come what? on. I know a great place to dig. Follow oh, me. Oh, all right already, all right already. I'm coming, I'm coming. Uh, well, uh, here's something you're really gonna dig. Baby talk. <laughs> Ready or not, here we come. <laughs> Well, we're here. Yeah, we're here. Oh, boy, we're here. Where's here? What do we do now? Oh. Look, look, I found a way out. Oh, me too. Oh, we have eye stalks. I can see. I can see. Oh, oh, oh. Hey, anybody know which way's up? Oh, forget that. Anybody know what we are? Mm. Mm. We're snails. We're snails. snails. We, we've got shells. Mm. Come on, let's do the with snails and shells dance. Yeah. Start without me. I want to see what's down there. Okay. Bye. Bye. Oh, and now let's take a musical look at what it's like to live in a shell. <laughs> this I gotta see. Oh, I thought you were digging with Cornelius. It's too messy. I don't want to have to take another bath this year. This year? <laughs> Very close up on you. Go. I'm Wanda Rat, Rodent Reporter, getting you answers to today's tough questions. Yeah. Let's see if one of these animals knows the answer. Yeah. Sir? Fifteen? I didn't ask the question yet. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Which of these crabs does not have its own shell? Yeah. The Sally Lightfoot crab, the fiddler crab, the hermit crab, or the shore crab? Your answer. Fifteen? Excuse me. <laughs> Trap door! Fifteen! does not have its own shell is the hermit crab. To avoid the inconvenience of growing its own shell, the hermit crab, like this one here, lives in empty shells which it finds on the seabed. Because the abdomen of the hermit crab is soft, it conveniently curves into any shape so that it can fit into any shell. The hermit crab's legs are also adapted for its lifestyle. As you can see, they're at the front of the body rather than on the side. This allows for freedom of movement in a variety of differently shaped shells on land or in the water. The hermit crab's motto is, have shell, will travel. If the hermit crab cannot find an abandoned shell, it will use anything which will give it protection. The crab pictured here found a very nice pot, but was not available for comment. This is Rhonda Rat reporting on the hermit crab. Now back to you, Stinky and Jake. 